So oftentimes the story behind the story is as entertaining, sometimes more than the story itself. Rick Mercer is certainly delivering the goods in his new memoir. The Canadian comedian is turning the spotlight on himself, inviting all of us readers into his comedic journey and sharing some behind the scenes details of his rise to fame. Rick Mercer is joining us this morning from Toronto. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Lindsay. How are you? I'm really well. I'm so excited to talk to you this morning. So the book is here. I've got it. It's called Talking to Canadians. You're talking to one right mm -hmm. now. This was your pandemic labor of love. How was this writing process for you? Because I know that you're used to making other people the subject matter. What was it like sort of to turn the spotlight around? Uh -huh. I don't know if I'd call it a labor of love, but I was very grateful that I had something to do because most people in show business, of course, once the pandemic happened, everything was pulled out from under them. I had this to write and uh, it, it really saved me, the writing process. And the one thing that kept me going was I wanted to write funny stories. It is a memoir, it is behind the scenes, but I wanted the stories to be fun. I wanted the stories to be funny. And there was a few trusted individuals who read as I produced, and they kept assuring me, oh, no, this is funny. I want more. I want more. <laughs> so it was uh, it was a blessing that I had this to do. Yeah, and it's so wonderful. I didn't realize, by the way, that you shared a birthday with Angela Lansbury and Evil Knievel. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a trio. <laughs> <laughs> All the dirt. All the dirt is in there. <laughs> uh, I want to walk through a few of the stories that are in this book, starting with Jean Chrétien. As a self-professed political nerd, this was your first time interviewing a prime minister. You get him to yeah. go with you to a power lunch at Harvey's, of all places, pickles on the side. And then when the shoot is over, I love this, you try to bum a ride with him back to Parliament Hill and he says yes. So what was that car ride like? I did bum a ride with him. I, well, I didn't know anything about being around prime ministers, of course, and and he, we already pulled off this incredible feat that we got him to come to me at Harvey's. I mean, <laughs> prime ministers are used to people going to them. But here and there, we were at Harvey's, and it was all over, and my cameraman, Pete, and my road director, Jeff Dion, were getting ready. We were packing up, and I, I was, you know, it was part of my job to help pack up as well. There was only three of us. And uh, Gretchen was walking to his car, and I thought, what the hell? And I said, can I get a ride to Parliament Hill? <laughs> <laughs> and he went, uh, okay. And I said, okay, boys. I didn't need to go to Parliament Hill, by the way. Right. But I got in. This was a clever thing. You know, on television, everyone wears microphones, and they're clipped on. And I took my microphone off as a courtesy and put it on the the little thing between the two of us. And then I unplugged it from the device. So it was clear that it was turned off and it was unplugged. And Cretchen's no slouch. He's been around these his entire life. And he reached over and he took the part that you would normally talk in, put it in the palm of his hand and no. scrunched it like that <laughs> and then held it for the 20 minute car ride. Smart guy. <laughs> yeah. Which he drilled me. Like, yeah. I, I didn't get a chance to ask him a question. He wanted to know where I grew up, how my father was voting, how my mother was voting, <laughs> why they liked the Liberal Party or why they didn't like the Liberal Party, how Brian Tobin was doing down there. Wow. Like, it was just a, it was a, it was, it was a, like a serious thrilling from the PM. Yeah. <laughs> the tables have turned. I also love the pictures that you show in this book. Some of them are just, like, absolutely hilarious. I want to show one and maybe explain what's happening here. Can you see what's on the screen? <laughs> Uh -huh, yes, I can. That is, I, I started, my side hustle uh, became hosting uh, shows, uh, you know, award shows, the Juno Awards, the Gemini Awards, the Canadian Screen Awards. And one of our first Canadian Screen Awards that I hosted, we called all, a lot of previous winners and every celebrity that we could think of. And we created this Gemini Lounge, and we asked them all to come at like nine o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning to do the shoot. We didn't know who would show up. Everyone showed up. In that picture, you see Frank Schuster, you see Gordon Pinsent, you see Wendy Mesley, you see, but Knowlton Nash, who of course is the news anchor that I grew up with, right. is in the middle of the crowd, shotgunning a beer out of a funnel. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> so, an incredible picture. It really well, is Frank so good. Schuster looks on. <laughs> I mean, how how Canadian so is that? So good. I also want to yeah. show our viewers a shot of David Suzuki, and I want to um, draw everybody's attention to your expression. You hold bragging rights. <laughs> Look at you for asking <laughs> David Suzuki, Doctor David Suzuki, one of the stupidest questions he's ever received. His words, not mine. What did you ask yes. him? Well. Both David Suzuki and I were involved in this charitable endeavor. We're alleged celebrities. He certainly was. Uh, posed nude for a charity. And I posed nude 
in a in a river holding a salmon in front of my door. <laughs> David Suzuki posed nude holding the earth over his head. But everyone was talking about Suzuki because the man was ripped. I mean, he had pecs and abs and, you know, he was 70 years old easily at the time. So when I bumped into him at this function where they launched the calendars, I said, I was very nervous. Yeah. But I knew what to talk about. I said, Dr. Suzuki, I watched the nature of things this week, and you're very concerned about firmed salmon. He said, oh, yes, I am. And I said, yes, you're worried about the, the firm salmon getting into the rivers. He said, yes, it would be very bad, very bad. And I said, well, when I took my picture with the salmon, that's a firm salmon. Was I putting the environment at risk, bringing the firm salmon into the river? <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, your salmon was dead, right? Oh. I said, yeah. He said, like it was frozen from a supermarket? I said, yeah. He said, I think we'll be all right. Oh. And then I said, is that the stupidest question you've ever been asked? And he said, no, no, no. Close. Close. So, You're in the running. So, yeah, I'm in the running. And I think of all the stupid questions David Suzuki must have gotten in his career, right. I asked one of the stupidest. Claim to fame, honestly, Rick Mercer. It is such yeah. a great book. So many great stories, so many great photos in it as well. Thanks for sharing your time with us this morning. Thank you very much. All right, congrats on the book. A reminder, the book is called Talking to Canadians. Don't hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.